Hello, welcome to the Sneaky Weasel Recap Show here. My name is Billy Rainford for Moto Central News. Uh, we're going to talk about today, what we're going to do is talk about yesterday's race in Sarnia at the Progressive Auto Sales Arena. It was round three of the Rockstar Triple Crown Arena Cross Series. Um, yeah, since it's, this looks like it may be the only nice day we're going to get this week, which really sucks because we got so many riders hanging out in the area. Uh, it's supposed to rain the rest of the week though, so what we're going to do here is we're going to, uh, well, we're going to sit outside here on the patio. The Sneaky Weasel patio, Sneaky Weasel beer, get it at your local beer stores. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's talk about Sarnia. Again, it was uh, round three of the Rockstar Triple Crown. Uh, the track, I mean, if you remember from last year, it was the same way. It was super tacky. I mean, the only way to describe it is 100% traction. I mean, it was really weird. You could stand behind the starting line with a camera, which I guess I should have done in hindsight. And as they took off, there was so much traction, there really wasn't even any roost being spit out. So. Uh, for the guys who'd never ridden this kind of stuff before, it was really strange because no matter what you did, even if you thought about turning, the bike would go whichever way you wanted to. And it was, uh, and a lot of the guys in the podcast interviews I did said it was hard to get used to because you could lean the bike and you could almost lean it right down because it would just keep grabbing. So you could grab those lines, grab the throttle, and go. Um, we had a bit of an interesting thing happen during the day. Uh, a, a girl actually out in her practice uh, managed to launch herself up into the stands. Uh, sustained some injuries. I think she's okay. She went. She was taken to the hospital. Hope she's doing okay. Uh, but what that did, that emergency call did, was it brought the fire department there, and I guess they sniffed some uh, some fumes. Obviously, did a test on the air quality, found it to be not acceptable. So what we had to do is uh, halt for a little while, get some more fans, open some more doors, get everything going. Uh, sounds like they had a really really stringent level of uh, air quality. Uh, the parts per million were lower than what we're normally used to uh, having to meet. So in the end, uh, I talked to Justin Thompson, and what he said was, we ended up having basically the cleanest air uh, arena cross that we've ever had. So, hey, it all worked out in the end, assuming she's okay, so hopefully she's okay. Um, yeah, we had some new riders show up, it was kind of cool. A lot of the Ontario guys showed up, raced both classes, uh, you know, some new guys in the 250, some new guys in the 450 class. We had Dakota Alex show up, he's now here for the rest of the season racing the 450 class. We'll get to how he did, but uh, in the qualifying um, 250 class, it was Luke Renslin up at the top, followed by Tyler Medallia, uh, Jair Mitchell, uh, Ryder Floyd, and number 19, that was Dylan Wright. Uh, the top six riders were all under the 22nd range. Uh, sixth place, by the way, was number 807, Drew Roberts on his 150 KTM. So as soon as he fired that thing up and got out there, he was an instant crowd favorite. So it was cool to see him, cool to hear him out there, man. He was really cooking out there. Uh, the 450 class, uh, local boy, number one, Cole Thompson, took top spot. He was 18.6. Luke Renslin was 18.8. .8. So very close, no matter what bike you're on. Again, the top six riders were all under the 22nd mark. With uh, We went to Thompson. Cade Clayson had a great qualifier there, number 12 in second. Gurky, uh, Sean Moffenbeier, fifth place was uh, Phil Nicoletti. Sixth was the new guy up from uh, Jay Vermont, uh, Dakota Alex. Uh, funny story with him, he doesn't care, we talked about it. He showed up, he had graphics all made up, but he had them made for the 250 class. He had the white numbers on black instead of black numbers on white. So he, he was rocking the uh, tape numbers out there, so it was kind of funny. Um, traditionally, last year was the first time at the Progressive Auto Sales Arena huge crowds come out to see their local boy Cole Thompson comes from a huge motocross family obviously brings out the crowd it was really neat to see filled the place cheered for him we'll get to what happened there but uh, the Clash for Cash went out as well um, Clash for Cash went to Matt Gerke so it was nice to see Matt put it together we all know he's got the speed he just needs the uh, the lock the starts he said he's gonna work on starts all week uh, as we get to the main events here but uh, the Clash for Cash man there were guys banging everywhere there were like I said there were no friends made out there. It got really rough. I uh, went to uh, uh, Matt Gerke, he got the five points. Cole Thompson was second. Dylan Wright on his 250 was third. And uh, fourth place went to number five, Tyler Medallia. Fifth place went to Sean Moffenbeier. So those are the guys who grabbed the points. Points are up for grabs. Those points do count for the championships in the arena cross. So uh, yeah, so very important points, as you can see here in a second, how close it is. Uh, we'll talk about the main events. Uh, the 250 main obviously was the first thing out there. Whole shot went to Brad Noddit, famously good at the whole shots. He's a West Coast American rider. Uh, so he got the whole shot, followed closely by Dylan Wright. Tanner Ward was up in third, then Luke Renslin. Uh, unfortunately, Ty uh, Tyler Medallia went down. Uh, I actually, I didn't see exactly what happened to him, so I sent him a text to see what, uh, kind of find out what happened. And he, he hears what he told me was that, uh, he figures that uh, perhaps Dylan Wright maybe flinched on the gate and that got him and Luke Renslin to kind of jump and hit into it. Um, his didn't move, and it, but it didn't fall. 
it unhooked his hole shot device. He said he came out with a, hole, with a wheelie and he was mid-pack off the start. And then he said someone landed in the rhythm section, stopped to cut the turn before the finish line and he was in the midair and it took his front end out. So his whole grip was stuck in the clay, it took him out. It took him basically the 18 second full lap to get his bike running again. And that was his race. The rest of the night was great. The bike was awesome, he wanted to say. But uh, yeah, he did manage to catch back up to the, uh, which was very impressive, get up to sixth place after that. Uh, but uh, yeah, he was a lap down, so that was too bad for Tyler. Um, up front on the second lap, uh, Dylan Wright made the pass. Everybody kind of had to make a, a pretty aggressive pass there before the finish line, kind of take the inside line, force the issue. Uh, Dylan Wright got into first, followed by Brad Noddett, um, Tanner Ward and Luke Renslin having a great battle there. Marco Canella was up there, followed by Jair Mitchell as well. And Jair went down just before the finish line, so he dumped it. He had to get up, lost a bunch of spots, of course. Such a short lap, tough to pass. Uh, at the halfway, uh, Dylan Ray started to kind of establish a nice lead. Uh, behind him, Tanner Ward and Luke Renslin were having a great battle. They had a nice little gap on uh, um, Brad Noddett and Marco Canella were having a good battle. Then there was a gap back to Jack Wright and um, uh, Quinn Amiot. Good to see those two guys out. And then behind them, it was um, Jair Mitchell. And then again, we had uh, um, Dylan Wright starting to move into the lap traffic. So he lapped his way quite a ways up into there. Uh, so in the main, the final, um, Dylan Wright took the win, followed by Tanner Ward, Luke Renslin, Brad Noddett, and uh, Marco Canella in fifth. Uh, I mentioned there in sixth place was uh, Tyler Medallion, managed to make himself up there. Unfortunate night for number 296, Ryder Floyd, the Texas rider who uh, came up and actually won the first round out in Abbotsford. Uh, he had some troubles. He had, a, he had to go to the last chance qualifier, actually, and he and uh, um, Guillaume St. Cyr got together. They both went down. It was a bit of a yard sale. There were bike parts all over. Guillaume was out. Uh, uh, rider actually managed to, he said, he just put his head down, went for it, managed to make it through after going down on the start straight, made it into the final into the main event. Unfortunately had a bike mechanical, uh, I believe it was a shifter shaft internal, so DNF for him. So he's having a bit of a tough go. Uh, the, I actually went in to interview him and talk to him afterwards into the dressing room. The man luck team, although it was a rough night, they're all high spirits. Uh, everybody was cool in there, so great to see. Cool to see that team doing well uh, up here uh, for the whole the duration of the summer as well. Uh, in the So the points right now in the, in the 250 class, unofficially how I have it, I have got, uh, it, Dylan Wright, I've got uh, Luke Renslin second, third I've got Marco Canella, fourth Brad Noddett, fifth Tyler Medallia. At the moment it looks like uh, Dylan Wright has an 11 point lead over Luke Renslin, so good for him putting it together, that's two wins in a row for Dylan, looking really good. Uh, 450 main, the whole shot went to number 164 again, famous for his good starts. Uh, that's uh, Dakota Alex got out there with his uh, with his tape number fours behind the 16s. Uh, behind him it was um, it was Phil Nicoletti followed by Cole Thompson, uh, Matt Gerke, uh, Sean Moffenbeier, and number 74, Ryan Derry coming out. Good to see him, on, him running up there with the big guys there early. Uh, so that was cool to see. Uh, number 164, uh, Dakota Alex, looked great up front. He said he'd never raced a, uh, an arena cross before, so good for him to actually be up there leading for such a long time. Actually had a pretty good gap, because behind him it was... Um, Man, you had Cole Thompson, Nicoletti, and uh, Gerke going at it. And then there was a bit of a gap back to an amazing battle between, I hope they showed it, we're able to see it on the uh, Two Wheels TV. Uh, but behind them, um, Kate Clayson and Sean Moffenbeier are going back and forth, man. These guys were going at it the entire time. Cole Thompson managed to get around those guys and start closing in. Dakota Alex said he kind of started tightening up mentally. Um, Cole was able to catch up. The crowd was going crazy. Cole caught up, made the pass. Again, it was the pass in that corner right before the finish line double jump which was tough. You know these 450 guys stayed in first gear the entire race. They maybe shifted into second on the start straight. After that it was first gear. They were doing that double, uh, finish line double in first gear. So Cole Thompson took the win followed by number 164 Dakota Alex at the, line, at the finish line and uh, Phil Nicoletti for third. Uh, the way I've got the points right now, well the top five, let's go Cole Thompson, Dakota Alex, uh, Phil Nicoletti, Matt Gerke and then uh, at the end it was uh, uh, Kate Clayson managed to get around and make the pass stick on uh, Sean Moffenbeier, so he took uh, the uh, fifth, Sean was, uh, Sean was sixth. The points, the way I have it at the moment, I've got Cole Thompson up there with 99 points. Behind him, I've got Matt Gerke with 89, so he's 10 points back. Uh, a few points back of that in third, I've got Phil Nicoletti, followed by Kate Clayson, and number three, Sean Moffenbeier. So, man, it's tight, tight, tight. 
leaders, uh, it, it's anybody's race up front. Cole Thompson does look to be the guy to beat up uh, in the indoors here, so he's going to be tough to beat as we had. Now we've got a week here, final round, the fourth round of the arena cross. Barry this weekend uh, up there, so it's going to be a tough week for training. Uh, a lot of the guys are talking about going to go for dunes, or Cole Thompson was hoping to open his uh, Thompson training training center down there in uh, in Brigden. So we're gonna, if it's uh, weather permitting, we're gonna head up to uh, go for dunes tomorrow, uh, do some vids, get some uh, interviews, some photos of the guys. So again, great racing. Thanks to Sneaky Weasel uh, for the uh, Moto Central sponsorship of the uh, patio party here in the sunshine. Again, this may be the only sun we see this week, uh, hopefully not, but uh, thanks for watching. It's been great and we'll see you guys in Barrie. Thank you.